Hello guys and welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. Today we're going to go over a full room tour of my shrimp room, right? Because today I want to show you guys um, how my room has evolved over the two years, the two or three years that I've lived in this house, right? So stay tuned, it's coming right up. Okay guys, right, so we're going to start off with a call to action first. If you're new to my channel, then please go and hit the subscribe button and bell notification so you never miss another video. This is the first time you guys are going to get to see my entire room, all of it, all at once, right? So, um, we're probably going to start over here because I think it's quite important that I thank the people that help support uh, my stream. These are my patrons, they help uh, me buy equipment that helps me make better videos, right? So I want to give you guys a big thumbs up and say I really, really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much, right? So, this is the kind of equipment that you can see that they helped me buy. This laptop was like $1,500. The... The headphones, they were like uh, 2,000 kroners, which is like a couple of hundred dollars. The microphone was the same again, a couple of hundred dollars. Thank you guys for helping me provide the rest of my subscribers with awesome quality. Right, so let's get over to, let's see, where shall we start? Let's start with probably the least successful side. It looks pr kind of pretty. This side is going to improve quite shortly as we build another rack. We have a couple of new plants in here as well. I always like to show you guys everything in my room. Especially the plants because I think a lot of you guys like to see them too. I'm trying to grow moss up here I've been trying different ways of growing moss and I want to see if I can Finally conquer it. Venus flytrap has went into this bag because I want to see if um, It prefers lots and lots of humidity and I think it does because it's actually growing quite well in this little bag Pothos as always These are my little two tanks that I have here. This is um, Just basically a vase. You can see one of the girls in here one of the shrimp that recently had her babies, but I've not yet seen any babies in here. Fingers crossed some of them have made it. This is uh, Tangerine Tiger Michelin. You can see how it's quite nice and white looking here. And the father is an orange eye blue tiger, right? So if any babies have survived in here, um, I would imagine they'd be pretty special. The only filtration in here is, um, well, it's technically not filtration. The only thing I put in here that will provide oxygen Apart from the plants is a little soaking oxidator that I, when I remember I fill it up and it will give the tank um, It will help clean the tank a little bit and provide some oxygen This is my uh, mixed orange eye blue tiger tank and blue dream tank I put a little bit of food in there to see if they'll come out Some of them have already seen down here, there's one of them, there's another one here Lots of them always hide under this little uh, ledge under here and this tank has been very meh so far um, They have had babies in here and there's probably one or two of them that might come out For the camera if you can see them No, nope, there's one of them here you see This tank is like one of these ones that's just taken extra long to establish itself There's also a couple of spixy snails in here as well that I can't really see There's one away up the back here you probably can see just in the darkness uh, So that is this tank Let's go over to Let's see, I didn't probably show you guys this one the last time. This one is a Tangerine Tiger kind of overflow tank. This is where all my Tangerine Tigers go, where they've been bred. Because these, these uh, type of shrimp, they multiply like the clappers. They're probably more prolific than a cherry shrimp. And you guys all know how prolific they are. That's where they go in here. I sell these as well. And they will be going on my website again once it warms up a little bit more here. Because... I need the temperature to go above 15 degrees Celsius, 10-15 degrees Celsius here before I start to sell them, right? So you can see the temperature up here at this level is 24 degrees Celsius, outside it is minus 0 0.6, right? So I still have the battle with the cold and the snow outside. A wandering dew plant up here, I've been experimenting with a little bit of java moss in a different container. This was uh, heavily infested with... String algae. What's interesting in here is I actually see some of it starting to climb up the side. Right, so this looked like it all died because it went really brown. The string algae is gone, but I can see that the java moss is starting to come back a little bit. Which is quite good. Up here I've been experimenting, as I said to you guys before, with different ways of growing java moss. Let's have a little look down through the top. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see anything at all in here. Um, I had them in... Uh, just little tubs like this on their own, providing them with a warm, moist, humid environment. And they didn't really grow, right? And I've been experimenting with them, uh, growing them in different water conditions like RO water, tap water, 
etc. And this one specifically was um, in with a little bit wood as well. I wanted to see if the wood gave off nutrients that would allow the Java moss to grow better. This one has kind of been so-so. It's been in here a long time. Since uh, the middle of last November, orchids, orchids, more moss. This one is uh, kind of like not really grown at all. This one was actually with Clone X. I don't know if you guys know what Clone X is. Clone X is like a, a hormone that you put on uh, rooted plants. Not rooted plants. It's a hormone you put on plants, uh, the, the base of a stalk of a plant to make it root rate. So I wanted to see if this would have any cool results with uh, my Java Moss Nut container. But you can, as you can see, it really didn't do anything. More orchids. These ones are coming on much better. You can see the new growth here. This is the old growth, the old dusty growth. But you can see the new growth here where it's come on quite well. This is since I put these uh, lights that I used to have under here, up there. All right, let's see. I want to go over all the plants first because you guys will love that, I think. More orchids. Uh, the pothos is growing like the clappers everywhere, as usual. This was my nepenthes. I decided to cut it right back, guys, because it was growing uh, quite long and um, it was more or less not producing any of the jugs. You can just see here that some of the small ones have grown back. Each of these little things here could possibly be a new plant, right? So they're all doing well. More pothos, more pothos, uh, more orchids, orchids, orchids. You can tell, guys, I love orchids. Uh, Plant-wise, let's we'll go over all the terrestrial ones. This was one that was rescued from uh, the living room and it was sat next to the fire, which was the wrong place, right? So you could see the dead growth here. Right, but I persevered with this because I thought it's not dead, it will grow again, and it has. It's starting to get new growth on it. So this is a work in progress. I don't even know the name of this one, but it looks quite quite nice. Uh, Redroot floater down here has grown lots of it. I will sell some of this in the spring once it warms up again. Uh, Salvinia has, uh, this got mold in it, and a lot of it died back. I do have a second bucket of this as well. I do see something else I've got down here in the back. I'm not sure what that is. Amazon frog bite in the triops tank. Uh, the triops that was in here has uh, died. It died probably about two weeks ago. And I've since reintroduced new eggs. If you watch my live stream, guys, you would have seen that I put new eggs in here. You can see the frog bite has grown really, really well. Uh, if you remember as well, this frog bite had completely wasted away to nothing and it's basically like a green bag of mush when I got this frog bite but you can see how much it's all um, grown. More and more pothos at the top. I love the pothos. It sets your room out a little bit like a jungle when you manage to grow lots of it. I have pothos growing everywhere even in the little nooks and crannies at the bark. Even away down the bark of the shrimp tanks lots and lots of pothos. And then we're on to the tanks, I think. Let's see, which ones will we start with? We've already did this side. You can see them here, a little bit in better detail. I'll probably try and get some macro fours or shots for you guys so you can see these a little bit better here. Um, let's start off with... Let's start off with this, side, right? Because I want to show you guys the things I'm most excited about last. And there's a reason for it. Right, so let's, let's get into it. Crystal Red Shrimp Tank, this is hashtag shrimp farm crossed with, I don't know what I'm talking about there guys, it is crossed with um, Tangerine Tigers in here, Crystal Reds, Tangerine Tigers, there's lots and lots of them in here. There's, I did want to try and make a video um, on the specific uh, babies that have been born in here because some of them are just spectacular, I don't know if you will see any of them in here, like this one here, what the, that is so beautiful. It is like a, a black and white pinto. It has the white spots in the head. There's quite a few of them like this as well. I've also noticed uh, that I have like red pintos in here. So this is definitely a way for, for uh, new beginners if you want to get pintos uh, cheaper is to get crystal reds and tangerine tigers. Look at this one. This is it's like a, I'll have to take a picture of this one. It's like a white shrimp and it has an orange head. That's pretty cool. Never seen anything like that. See, it's on the end of my finger, really tiny little thing. This one here, you can see here, look, is uh, a pinto as well. Right, so I'll try and get some really good macro shots of these guys because I love seeing all these little new shrimp in here. There's so many of them as well. Let's go on to the crystal black. Hashtag crystal black shrimp farm. 
Crystal Black, Tangerine Tiger, this tank was set up the same as in I wanted to see which um, type of hybrids we can get out of this. And so far, I haven't really seen an awful lot. I've got lots and lots of little Crystal Blacks. There are quite a few hybrids, but it's the type of hybrids where they are still in F1 and they're not very spectacular. But I have noticed in here, guys, that there was um, a couple of little shrimp that looked like brown King Kongs. Let's see if we can find anything in here. Again, I will try and go in with my macro mode and see if what we can find, because I love, I love this kind of tank where it's mixed like this. All right, so let's go over to Eeny Meeny Miny Mo. This tank over here has had a slight overhaul, as you can see. It's still not finished yet. I'm probably going to uh, move this tank as well because I really love watching this tank and it is, look at this guys, it's like in the hardest possible spot ever for me to get into here and show you my shrimp, right? These are just, this is just a cherry shrimp tank, but it's one of my best looking tanks. Don't you agree? This one was spectacular before and I moved it down here and it's went kind of like so-so. I did do a little bit of tank maintenance in here last week. I, I cut back a lot of the plants because they, they were just so overgrown. I cleaned the glass as well. There's quite a lot of cherry shrimp in here. And I, what else I did notice, guys, is the Malaysian trumpet snails in here are massive. So we'll try and get them on camera too. On to my uh, red zebra pinto tank here. This tank has been, without a shadow of a doubt, probably the most successful tank I've ever done to date for a higher grade shrimp specifically as well. Let's see, I hope I'm not shaking too much and you guys can appreciate the actual numbers of shrimp in here. Like there, a couple of hundred shrimp easily. Look in, look in the subwasser tank, hundreds of shrimp. If you guys can see up the back, past the glare, on the sponge filters and on the uh, leaves etc. There's, there's just so many of them, right? So this uh, setup was really, really successful for these guys. So hope you like to see them. Let's go over to the tangerine tigers. Tangerines are are always that type of shrimp that's very very hard just to look at because of the colour. Well, I like them all the same, especially when it comes to crossbreeding. They're a godsend as a shrimp because the, these guys are pretty easy to breed. Tank is just the same as always. Looking good. Lots of algae. This probably would have made a good Sulawesi tank as well. Onjai Blue Tigers, Royal Tigers in here, we have Blonde Tigers as well. Um, when you see uh, Blonde Tigers and stuff in here as well, this is typically the type of thing where you should start to take them out and put them somewhere else. I'll probably do this today because I have plans to move quite a few of my shrimp out of this tank um, to put in my cross breeding tank. I'm going to show you that guy, that tank in a second guys. And I want to take out some of the rusty shrimp in here, probably all of the normal tigers as well, and some of the blondes, they will be going into the mixed tank that I'll show you in a second. The only other thing that's changed in this tank guys, is um, this huge ball of sawasa tongue used to be here, remember? And I've detached it from the wall and I put it to the back, just because uh, when this was nearer the front, you, you couldn't really see anything else in the tank, right? I, I know it looks like you can't see anything else now, but there's so much more uh, space for us to look at. Up here you can see this weird algae, you can see in here, all the way through here. See all the little baby orange eye blue tigers up here? I actually really like this algae, I don't know what it is called, but it looks kind of cool. So I've been very hesitant, you know like if a tank's working, I don't care if it has algae if the tank is working. Well you can clearly see the tank is working, right? There's lots of sawasa tongue, sawasa tongue's really grown like the clappers in here. Uh, the java moss is growing through the sawasa tongue, there's, there's algae. But we have a ton of shrimp, right, so I don't wish to change anything in something that is working. Let's go over to here. This is just my uh, catchment tub for a uh, growing Amazon frog bit. And you know what, guys, I was thinking, if I put a filter in here, I could put shrimp in here. So that's probably something I'm going to do soon. Just like to pat this down every so often, because what happens is you tend to get mold growing on top of floating plants. Um, if you don't like make sure there's water going across the surface because there is um, in nature rain would hit the top of this and wash all this off constantly but because we're in a room where it never rains you don't see this 
This one is very hard for me to show you. This is the blue ram's horn snail tub. It has a lot of uh, green water in it, which, you know, I might experiment with. We might take out some of this and add it to some of the tanks because I'd imagine the shrimp would be able to filter feed off this, especially like the vampire shrimp. Um, I put a bag of oyster shells in here just to make the the water a little bit harder, you know, so the snails, um, they, they can have... They can basically make their own fully formed shells without erosion. Right, so that's basically all this side. We have the cull tank that I didn't show you yet. With the duckweed. Looking good. It's very hard for me to show you. You probably just see down here the shrimp. Still eating a green bean from a couple of days ago. Looking good. Let's get over to here. Let's start on the bottom. I'm going to quickly check to see if we can see any of the vampire shrimp because you guys always ask me about Bertha Big Bertha and Brucey, let's see if we can see any of them where are they? it's like a, it's like a game to try and find these guys by the way guys if you're new these are um, painted fire reds I am not a hundred percent happy with this tank because um, I don't think there is enough shrimp in here. I know a lot of you guys will think, Jesus, Mark, it looks like there's hundreds of shrimp in there. There is, right, but guys, this tank is a hundred and... Um, 120 litres, I think this one is. This is not that many shrimp for this size of a tank, honestly. I've just seen Bruce away up the back. He's upside down on that little piece of... Um, what are these things called? These are charcoal bamboo sticks that I bought online. They still haven't sunk, they've been in here for a week. One of them has sunk over here that you can see. So he's up there feeding away. I feed this tank every day. A powdered food as well. Just to make sure the vampire shrimp get enough food. This tank is doing okay, as I said. Um, I, I'm trying to brainstorm why I can't breed more shrimp in this tank than I can. I mean, I feed the tank every day, this one specifically, because there's just so many shrimp. Uh, you can see it had lots and lots of algae as well. You know, and the other thing about this tank as well, guys, is I'm not 100% happy with these Hamburg Martin filters because um, I think they get clogged up with a lot of, you know, detritus and muck because these ones do. I have to clean these ones every single time I do a water change in here. Look at that beautiful shrimp on that filter there. I have to do, uh, I have to clean these filters every single time I do a water change. So I can imagine how much muck and crap that this is holding in. It's probably why it has so much algae growing on it like this. Alright, so let's go up to the next tanks. Hello Bruce. I don't know where your girl is. It would have been nice to see her. I haven't seen her for a couple of days actually. I hope she's okay. She probably is. She's probably just hiding somewhere. Quite often I see them um, under this Anubis. Just under the leaves here in the shade. <coughs> I'm trying to stand up without pulling the cable out. Alright, this one. This is actually a tank I didn't feed there, which I should have done before. I turned the camera on. I must have missed it. Um, you guys can see how well this filter is working. Look at this, the middle section there of this filter. How brown it is. Now that was white floss before. It's getting some kind of bearded algae on the top. I like that as well. There's plenty of flow going through it with the air. This tank is like my catchment tank for all the snails. Once a week I will add um, cucumber to the, all the tanks. And what I do guys is I use these corn holders. And I put it into the cucumber, put it in the tanks. And I wait, I wait for like a day and I come back and I take out the cucumber. I do this in all the tanks. I take it out of the tanks and it will be covered in these um, snails basically. These ram's horn snails. Hello Groot, how are you doing? <gasps> Oh, there's so many of these beautiful... This tank has really, really caught on fire since uh, probably the last month. A lot of the babies... Remember guys when I, s I show you my tanks and I'm like, Oh, you look at all the babies and a lot of the time you guys just can't see the babies because they're so small. But you, you could probably see more of them this time. Um, if I had to guess, there's probably 50, 60... Uh, mixed steel and blue bolts in here. I l absolutely love these. What's what's pretty cool about this as well is I still see like the odd um, red tie one being here. So this has come from something 
that's interbreeded with these one of these guys before probably like a genetic from a great great grandparent because there's one there you see it? there's a mazura red crown there there's a wine red there as well but these ones are lovely beautiful beautiful shrimp let's go on to project red tank these are all red taiwan bees in here and this one beautiful I, I got guys i can't say this enough to you um i'm I hate it that I, I don't have more tanks because there's like three or four different types of shrimp in here that I would love to have in different tanks and selectively breed them. Right, see like the uh, Missouri crowns for example. These these deserve their own tank. Missouri crown Taiwan bees, they deserve their own tank. The wine reds deserve their own tank. Uh, the ruby reds like this. In here right now I can only see one at the front. I can't really see anything else. But these, this is something I would have liked to work with and uh, breed a tank of the ruby reds. You can see another small one there. There's a little one here too. Right, so I'm stuck. I hate it that I'm stuck in such a small room. There's another ruby red there. What's also interesting about this, guys, is these guys throw out quite a lot of um, goldens, I've noticed. And these goldens, um, I do take them out, but I put them in my mixed breeding tank up, up, up top there. And these also will produce... Uh, wine reds and ruby reds, the goldens, and they also produce goldens. Isn't it cool? Isn't it just awesome being a shrimp breeder? I hope my camera's recording after talking for so long without actually stopping. Alright, so this is my mixed uh, black zebra pinto. It's, uh, I'm going to call it a, a shadow black zebra pinto tank because um, in here you can probably see. I take out blue bolts out of this all the time. My original occupants in here were uh, blue bolts, blue steels probably, and um, black zebra pintos. Right, and they've had a lot of babies in here. You can see there's like babies everywhere in here. Babies and shrimp everywhere. And there's also quite a lot of uh, blue bolts still. Still being born. They're still throwing out that any of the adults, zebra, black zebras in here that are females, when they have babies, they still throw out the odd little blue bolts. There's one, two, three. There's quite a lot of them in here actually. Four five, six, so there's six little blue blues that will go in here. And what I normally do with these guys is I move them from here to here. Right, and it doesn't matter if the young that are born in here have um, mixed genetics because I take them out, I put them somewhere else, right? So this tank will eventually go back to being a blue steel or a blue bolt tank. The, this tank is, a, I think it's a little bit too far gone for me to call it a blue bolt tank anymore. I think it is a blue steel tank with some Missouri blue bolts in it. Missouri blue steel blue bolts, if that's even such a thing. So that's looking good. So this rack has done uh, really, really well. Uh, you know what it is, guys? I keep on looking down here. I love looking at my painted fire reds because they're so beautiful. This this tank needs a caliber. Maybe it's a little bit premature saying there's not a lot of shrimp in here because you can see there's like more and more of them coming from the sides to the front. This is one of the Spixy snails in this tank. And let's go up to the top and have a look at this. This tank, while not being the most beautifulest with its uh, filtration, um, I like this tank probably the most, probably because it has the the most uh, diversity out of all my tanks. Right? There's there's still a lot of work for me to do in this tank, like as I said to you guys before. There's at least two or three different types of. Um, orange eye blue tiger to come out this tank that I want to put in here. By the way guys, I was thinking about another breeding project that I never thought about before, and that is this. You know how I have this green top here with the um, the blue ram's horn snails in them? I was thinking, why don't I try, you know, maybe take out one or two tangerine tiger females and add a couple of um, orange eye blue tiger males into this little tub here and see what happens, see what young is produced because I think that would be quite a cool mix. I'm not really sure what it would look like, but there's another mix. So that's another mix that we could probably add to this tank a later day, right? So this tank is to get um, orange eye blue tigers in here probably today because they also, as I said before, they have a version that is a rusty color, right? And rusty for them means it's there, there's kind of like a red color. I think it looks like a blood red color. So I, th I think it looks really, really cool. I would like those genetics there to be passed on to this tank. 
in this tank, as I said to you guys like a few minutes ago, is my is probably one of my favourite tanks to look at just because there is such a mix of shrimp in here. As I said as well, I'll also go over uh, this with a macro camera as best I can. There's a beautiful little half cider here. Quite a few of you guys have noticed in my stream, this, this little fella here. It means half of his body is like plain. This guy's actually come from Blue Bolt, so he has, in the white part of his body, he's blue. But on the other side, he's black, and he looks really, really special. We have like mixed uh, crystals. That is another thing I, I don't actually have in here, is any crystals. Some of them will have crystal genetics, because I did start this tank with some crystals. But again, we have crystal reds in here, we have crystal blacks in here. So I was thinking probably today I'll take out uh, three or four really nice females from this tank and i'm choosing females guys because it's easier for me to crossbreed stuff if these guys are will a lot of these guys will be males right if i use females in here yeah, to, to hold the eggs basically right because then when we switch them over to here there'll be more shrimp born than there will be if i used a male for example because i'm adding females to the tank right so we're using uh, a couple of uh, females at this tank. I'm also planning to have a look at this tank and see if I can pull out a couple of uh, females as well. So that's crystal reds, crystal blacks. These are already mixed, so they will have mixed genetics. As I said to you guys before, we'll have the royal blues. Uh, the pot would be classed as culls, all coming out of these tanks and going into this tank today. And as you can see, this tank is already really well mixed. Really, really well mixed. We have... Um, Different types of zebra pinto in here, tangerine tigers that are crossed. We have ones that you couldn't name that are crosses as well. They're just basically crosses from uh, any shrimp that's mated with the tangerine tigers. And they throw, they throw out these awesome patterns. Uh, some of my biggest shrimp in this tank have come from crosses, which is quite cool to see as well. Uh, what else is in here? I'm not sure what this is called. I was speaking to one of my friends, uh, Dennis, from Pure Nordic, and he gave me... A red devil this isn't a red devil but this is what is this called a hollow eye i think this one is there's lots of mixed little fancy tigers as well lots of blue lots of missouras and over here it doesn't end over there look at what the hell i wish i could show you what i'm looking at there's there's like a tangerine tiger with a red head again remember we saw it in one of the other things more there's another little red thing there there's one of the hollow eyes there as well. These guys are just beautiful. Zebra pintos, red ones. There's ones, I don't know what they're called. They look like, um, they kind of remind me of, if any of you guys know about World War II tanks where you have this panzer pattern on tanks that were used in Arctic warfare. Some of the shrimp look like this and it looks really cool. The shrimp all the way up through the Sawasa tongue as well. Let's have a little look over here. Hello, little shrimp. So this tank is doing really, 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 really well. Apart from it looks a little bit too uh, full of Sawasa tank. Once it becomes a little bit warmer, I'll stick some of this in my shop as well. And there you go. I've changed this filter just to give it more, um, more media, basically, more area for media. This one probably holds about two and a half liters to three liters of biohome. And here, double sponges, pat mini filter. We've got the air running through the top, right? And uh, this is way overkill for this tank, but I, I like the way it looks because it looks very clean as well. You see, the water is very, very clean. You can tell looking at just how clean it is as well, right? So, uh, this container was bought like this. This is not something I've recycled. A few of you guys mentioned that this was uh, a container used for antifreeze for my car. No, that's not what this is. For. I use I bought this from a camping place specifically for this. It was like 70 kroners or something. Seven pound or something for this. So I hope you've enjoyed our little tour today. You can see I'm breeding breeding shrimp at my ass basically. Uh, things I wish to change, because I think it's important guys that I tell you everything about my, my shrimp room. Things I wish to change right are I wish that these guys were a little bit more prolific. I will figure this out why um, I'm not able to breed these as successfully as the other ones, you can see one of the Spixy snails here coming to the front. Uh, because it will be something, there's always going to be a reason for something. That, you know, if you're unsuccessful at doing anything with shrimp, if you're unsuccessful, there will be a reason for it. I have a little bit of a hunch that it might be something to do with 
um, me using Montmorillon equally. I'm not 100% about this, but I'm sure maybe one of you guys could test it for me. It is because I actually don't have a pH test kit here. I do have pH a pH pen, but I'm not sure how reliable it is. Um, it's the test to see if uh, Montmorillonic clay lowers pH rates. So if I added something in this tank that lowers pH, that kind of defeats the purpose of me using a uh, baking soda and stuff to try and raise the pH rates, like counterproductive rates. So th that could be an issue in this tank. It could also be an issue down here as well, where uh, you remember guys, I was saying to you like literally a couple of minutes ago that this tank isn't doing as good as I think it should do. It's still doing okay. It's a decent sized colony, but this colony should be easily four or five times this size and this size of tank, right? So that's what I'm aiming for there too. Goals coming up um, in general in my shrimp room. Um, I want to change the lighting again. I'm, I, I do get sick of the, the lighting issue I always have in here. Um, and, and basically guys, it is this as well. In here I had bohouse lighting. Let me just show you guys as well. Look, bohouse lighting, two two bohouse lights over here. This is where I put my recycle stuff. Uh, bohouse lights here, kaput, finished. And that is not the first ones. A few months back, you guys would have seen me doing a live stream and you would have seen uh, one of my lights fail on me then. And that was another bohouse light. I used to have two of them on here, that one failed, and the one that's on there now is starting to fail, right? So I really don't recommend Bauhaus lighting. I've actually deleted that video off my channel. So it's an issue I have with lighting, something I would love to fix. Um, because, it, I mean, I love doing DIY and stuff, but you know, guys, it's sometimes you just wish that you could buy something to go over the tank, instantly fix that, is it? Right, so that is what I'm looking for with that. Why are you looking? Get off. Right, so the lighting issue has to be fixed in here. I'm, I am happy with these smaller tanks with the filtration. I was thinking about trying to pretty these tanks up a bit up here. I'm not very happy about the Hamburg Matten filters because I don't think they're as good as people make out that they are. Um, as I said to you before with the reasons. Um, the, the other thing as well was I, I want, as I said, I want to pretty these tanks up a little bit, right? And possibly change these filters. I probably, if I change them, it will be for canister filters and uh, the media that's inside will be reused. Of course, all the bits and pieces like the part mini filters and stuff will all be reused as, again. I'm not, I don't plan to put canister filters in the smaller ones. Um, what else? I do have plans to set up another tank yet. I've still not decided on what or where it's going to go, but I can tell you this, guys, I've been looking into uh, maybe possibly getting Cardinal Denerla Sulawesi shrimp. Right? So that, that is a different type of shrimp altogether for us to uh, play with. Um, it requires uh, much warmer water. They typically need something like 27 degrees to 28 degrees uh, water. So it would be a tank uh, with a heater. You're talking about a gravel or, or um, a sand substrate. This kind of setup down here would have been perfect for them. Gravel, or sand, substrate, harder water. Um, they require a pH between 7.5 and 8.5, I do believe. So you can see I've been doing my homework a little bit on this, right? So the next stage for that would be to find where am I going to put this tank? We did talk about doing a rack here, but I'm a little bit impatient. I want to set up this tank quite soon right? because it takes months to cycle. And I was thinking, should we put one here? Maybe cap off that tank there, move the plants over there. But look how small a profile would have to get for a tank to fit in here. It would actually also have to fix the base because it's a little bit uneven there. So that is what we have planned. I might actually go with the rack because it will uh, just change this whole area over here. But you can see guys, I have lots and lots of plans. I also, this is another thing as well. I know this video might be dragging on a little bit for you guys that hate me blethering. Um, but I, as I said, I want to change my lights, but I want to change my lights, not just for the shrimp tanks. I want to change my lights for uh, the plants on the top, right? I want to have grow lights and I know they can be a little bit hard to look at, but I mean, when I'm in here doing something, I can switch them off. Um, when I'm not in here, they can be on. You know, the ones that have like a full spectrum range, you hang, you can hang them from the top. And I know these are just both, not both, these are just, um, you know what they're called, but I need plants 
I need my plants to do better than they are because that is that is like a feature of my room as well. I love shrimp keeping, but I also love keeping plants, right? So we need to get some kind of grow lights up here, grow lights, new uh, new lights for the tanks. You can see I'm, I've been thinking about this a lot, right? So we have billions of stuff to do in the coming months. Here right now is still the off season for me regarding uh, selling shrimp, buying shrimp. So. This is a good time for me to plan these other things, new lights, new rack, right? So we have a lot coming up and I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Let me please just tell you about a few things before we go um, and say goodbye. And that is I live stream uh, twice a week on a Wednesday at seven o'clock and a Saturday at 9 p.m. And uh, my streams are normally a lot of fun, normally a lot of fun. We, we sometimes have a guest on there as well, just to keep the conversation going. And we talk about all things shrimp. I show you feeding videos and DIY stuff I do in my room. And in general, they're just really cool to do. Right? The other things are, uh, please go check out my website, uh, which has new stories on it probably every week now, which is really good. I have a writer there on there helping me do stuff called Sir Pronalot. Hope he's watching the video. Uh, him, he's helping me do stuff. We have something helping with the SEO side of that website as well. Um, other things could be like, um, could you please go and check out my Facebook group called Aquarium Shrimp Keeping. I think you guys would love to see something like that too. Also, as I mentioned to you before, I'm never really going to push things like Patreon, but if you want to become a patron, uh, please check out the description. What that does is it gives you um, more of a community feeling to do with like the, the shrimp group in, in general, basically. Right? It is a place where I talk to people regularly. Uh, daily, day by day, we're starting a new thing as well on called, uh, on called, called Discord, uh, which um, allows me to talk to you guys every single day in person as well. We're also going to integrate this into my stream, which will be fantastic. So you can see, we're having uh, lots and lots of plans. I also have a store, guys. If you want to go and check that out, I sell shrimp food, shrimp accessories in the spring, which will be in. Uh, more or less two two months I will start to sell my shrimp again I still haven't decided if I'm going to uh, ship shrimp outside of uh, Norway because there is a slight issue there where um, I'm not comfortable selling shrimp if they might die right? if they might die I just don't send right so I don't care about the money when it comes to this kind of stuff I'm not going to kill animals to make a few bucks right so mm, I've not decided on the best way to go I think probably what will happen is I have to wait until it's warm enough where I don't use heat packs because I think it might be the heat packs that are the issue, right? The, I think the heat packs are not as, um, I don't think they're as reliable as the manufacturers make out. I think some of them might go way above temperature and some of them might go way below, right? So there is other things. Plants, as I said before, will be shipped once I'm comfortable that the temperature up here is well above freezing. Plants are a little bit different. I can ship them a little bit earlier. We will have a uh, sabwasa tang. I have lots and lots of it. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about it as well. We will have frog bit over here. We have it growing in tubs. And you guys can see, right? I share all my stuff here. Uh, you guys can just copy me and sell your stuff as well. We have uh, red root floaters here, going to be sold. Lots and lots of stuff going on. Um, I wish my nepenthes would grow better than they are and you can see here you can see how well it is growing up nearer the light compared to the base and that is all that's wrong remember i was talking to you guys a few minutes ago about wanting better grow light type things for this room well that is why okay so let me just turn the camera around that has been quite the blether today i hope you've enjoyed today's video because um, i've enjoyed making it thank you guys for watching Happy shrimp keeping. If you're new, welcome to the shrimp farm and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.